Paper 1H is over and it included the following. But you already knew that. The crucial question is what was missing? In this video, we'll go over the main topics that did not appear in Paper 1H together with the sample questions from each topic. You can find these questions together with a collection of questions by topic on our website. You can find the link to the website in the description of the video below. I've divided the topics into five main areas numbers, graphs, algebra, statistics and probability, and geometry and measures. Let's start with area number one, number. No question on compound units, so expect one. Sometimes the formulae are given in the question, like in this question, but some other times you need to remember them. If the formula is not given, then the units can guide you. For example, here we are asked to find the density in grams per cubic centimeter. Grams is the unit of mass. Cm cubed is the unit of volume, so density is mass over volume. Regarding the upper and lower bounds question in paper 1H, that was an extremely easy one, so having another one mixed with another topic will not surprise me. Speed is also a compound unit, so a question like this one is also possible. And since I mentioned speed, make sure to know how to convert from one unit to another. In paper 1H, there were two simple questions on algebraic fractions, but no question with numeric fractions. So I expect to see this type of nice question at the very beginning of the paper. It's always a good warm up for the rest of the paper. Prime factorization, highest common factor and lowest common multiple. There is always a variety of difficulty. You could get a very straightforward question or a more challenging one. In any case, revise the topic because it did not appear in paper 1H. Paper 1H had an inverse proportion question. There's a small chance of a direct proportion question in paper 2H, but that chance is very small. No ratio question in paper 1H, so a must revised topic for paper 2H. Another must revised topic is recurring decimals, although these are standard questions like this one. The students who saw this question in November 2021 don't share this thought. Moving on to the graphs topics. Differentiation is a topic that usually appears and it usually does towards the end of the paper. So get ready for a question that either involves a gradient or motion of a particle. Remember, starting with displacement, you differentiate once to find an expression for the velocity. Differentiating again will give you an expression for the acceleration. The graphs of the three trigonometric functions should be well known. These are sine, cos and tan. Sine and cos are seen more frequently, but you should be prepared for all three. Now there was a two mark question regarding transformations in paper 1H that was very simple, so combining trigonometric graphs with transformations in paper 2H will not surprise me. Inequalities on graph is another question that may appear. I don't recall seeing a complicated question on this topic and it usually appears in two forms. Either you are given the inequalities and you have to draw the region, or you are given the region and you need to find the inequalities. Solving equations graphically is another topic that was missing from paper 1H. Doesn't appear that frequently, but you should be prepared just in case. In paper 1H, there was a question where you had to draw a quadratic graph, so probably if this question appears in paper 2H, I believe the graph will be given. The last question in paper 1H involved straight line geometry. It had gradient, perpendicular lines, midpoint, and equation of a straight line. So if they add another straight line question in paper 2H, I suspect this will be an easy one. If they want to challenge you, they can ask for the distance between two points, which was missing from paper 1H. Finding the gradient to a curve by drawing a tangent is a question that rarely appears. Will this be the year they decide to bring this back? We'll have to wait and see. But while you wait for paper 2H, make sure you learn how to do this. Same goes for travel graphs, extremely rare, but better be ready. Remember, there are two types of travel graphs, distance time and speed time graphs. Before moving on to algebra, I will make a pause and ask you to subscribe to our channel to help us grow and continue posting useful videos. Let's move on. In paper 1H, there were two questions involving algebraic fractions, but both were simple. Be ready for a more challenging one involving quadratic factorization. Changing the subject of a formula is a popular type of question. It creates some trouble when a fraction is involved and you need to collect like terms and factorize. Completing the square. Some students like this, some others really hate it. This question from June 2020 was a real nightmare for many students. In paper 1H, there was a question on functions that involved a composite function. Quite unlikely to see another functions question, but I have this here because finding the inverse of a quadratic function involves completing the square or using the quadratic equation, none of which appeared in paper 1H. In paper 1H, the function question led to a linear inequality, but quadratic inequalities are totally different type of questions. They can also appear through a word problem like this one. 
Proof questions are not so common, but if they do appear, you don't want to just stare at them. So make sure you practice some of these questions. In paper on age, there was an arithmetic sequence question. So if another question appears in 2age, I expect this to be an easy and straightforward question. Paper 1H had a question on linear and nonlinear simultaneous equations, so getting a question with two linear equations in paper 2H will not surprise me. Remember, graphically, the solution of two linear simultaneous equations is the point of intersection of the two lines. Moving on to statistics and probability. Cumulative frequency diagram is a must revise topic. Finding the median and the interquartile range could be asked in this question, or on a question on their own, given a list of numbers. Even though the first question of paper 1H involved a frequency table and finding the mean, a combined means question is a strong candidate for paper 2H. Sets was a topic that was missing from paper 1H. This can take many forms. You could have a question like this one or one with a Venn diagram. You could even get a word problem with a Venn diagram. Although in paper 1H there was a tree diagram question and a probability word problem, you could be given a tumor part of a question on conditional probability. If the setter of the exam paper is a real fan of probability, they can even include a question asking you to find the expected number of an event happening. Extreme, but not impossible. Finally, geometry and measures. No question in paper 1H for angles in parallel lines, so learn the rules because sometimes you are asked to give reasons as well. In paper 1H, you are asked to find the area of a trapezium and also the area of a sector. In paper 2H, you could be asked to find the perimeter of a compound shape. I was really surprised not to see a question involving circle theorems in paper 1H, so it is a must revise topic. It's so important that we are including two questions in our revision handout. Construction is a topic that does not appear very often, and the times it did appear, it was either a perpendicular bisector question or an angle bisector. Intersecting chords is another topic that does not appear that often. I have chosen this question because it was one of the trickiest questions on this topic. Similar triangles questions are usually straightforward when appearing on their own. If they want to make things tricky, they can either include areas and volumes of similar shapes or have a frustrum question. This could appear as a cone or as a pyramid. Transformations of shapes is another type of question that was missing from paper 1H. Don't forget to take your tracing paper if your school does not provide you with one during the exam. Paper 1H had right angle trigonometry, sine rule, cosine rule, but no 3D trigonometry, so get ready for this type of question. Finally, although paper 1H had that vector question involving lambda nu or any other letters you like to use, I would be prepared for a simple vector question involving addition of vectors and finding the magnitude of a vector.